So a few weeks back, I had a gig. Actually, for once, I had a gig. I was playing a, uh, I was playing this guitar. It was for a musical. This is a nylon string guitar. It's the musical called for it. And I realized, wow, I've never set up a helix patch for my nylon string. Um, this is an Alvarez 460C classical guitar. You can see the string spacing is a little bit more modern, not not quite a true classical. And of course, it has an undersaddle piezo pickup. So in this video, I thought I'd take you through the patch and share with you all my settings and, and some tips and stuff for creating a nice, faithful recreation of your guitar. What it sounds like acoustically, we're going to try and replicate that through a piezo, through the Helix. For anyone that had bought my preset library in the past, I threw this one in there as a free update. Uh, so you can check out that Google Drive link that you would have received when you first downloaded it. Uh, and if you haven't downloaded it, if you haven't gotten it yet, there's a link in the description. If you're not interested at all, you're welcome to check out the settings on the screen as we move through. I'm not hiding anything. So let's go to HX Edit, and I'll share with you a few tips on, on getting a great nylon string tone. All right, well, there's the preset, number 60, nothing else. I've just got it on my, my new HX Stomp XL over here. Um, and I've even left you a block open here to add in whatever you want. Pretty much there's enough DSP left over on the HX Stomp units to add in anything, uh, but on the larger Helix units, this will just serve as a, a firm foundation for whatever other effects you want to stack on top of it. Let's, uh, let's just get a, a sample of the guitar just as it is through the camera mic here, and then we'll A-B it with the preset, and you can, you can let me know in the comments how I did. How about the Helix preset now? Yeah. I mean, granted, it's still piezo pickup, it's not going to be perfect, but I like to think this is a pretty decent sound, even if you're uh, strumming harder. Not bad, huh? Uh, so let's start off with input impedance. I leave it at 1 meg. This is always a great thing to experiment with, moving it around when you're building presets. But a piezo pickup is usually pr like pretty high output, so I'm, I'm leaving it there at max. Um, First thing in line here is a compressor, just to give it a little bit more sustain. Sometimes with the piezo pickups, it can sound a little rubber bandy. You hit a string hard and it, it just kind of dies away from that. Compressor is always a good thing for an acoustic instrument anyway. And then I have a series of EQs here with an impulse response and then some effects later. For the impulse response, by the way, I'm just, you can pretty much use anything you want, I think, as long as it sounds good. I thought the, that the IR really added to it. Um, if you don't have an impulse response to try here uh, of an acoustic instrument, this one's by a, a pack from Three Sigma Audio, by the way. Um, if you don't have an IR, let's see what it sounds like without it. that is much much better with the IR. So what I like to do with uh, the EQ here is I'll, I'll typically start with a pretty high Q which means uh, we're taking the affected frequencies and we're making it very narrow. I'll boost the gain and then I'm gonna search. I'm gonna go back and forth and search for a frequency that either sucks or helps out the sound a lot. And in this case 120 Hertz in that low register and I created a wide Q now so we're affecting a lot of low end. Um, I boosted it by 3.5 decibels. And then I'll do the same with the mid and the high. And then I found that high cut and low cut 
was really helpful here as well. So nothing above 13.5k is escaping and nothing below 90 hertz is escaping. And then for the next EQ here, I used a 10 band graphic and this is basically where the, the frequencies are set and all you can control is the amplitude, the volume of each one. So that low end, for some reason, even though I had a low end, like a, a low cut there, I was still hearing this 31.25 hertz and 62. It was still affecting the sound a little bit. So I took it down there and then I worked some other magic in this area, just kind of experimenting until I found something that worked. And then lastly, I threw an impulse response on it. And the one that I decided worked the best out of the pack was the Martin D45 Piezo 1A. It doesn't really matter if you're using a nylon string um, impulse response or not because it's an impulse response of the body of the guitar. It's it has nothing to do with the actual strings on it. Though I guess if you're using an IR of a guitar that was made for nylon strings, maybe it has a different, slightly different response. I don't think it's too important though. All we really need to know is that the end sound is good. And by the way, since it's a little confusing, um, when you're dialing in a tone on an acoustic instrument, you know, you're hearing stuff from the instrument and you're hearing stuff from the monitor. So how can you tell, you know, what, what it's actually gonna sound like? What are you actually changing? So uh, a quick trick, a workaround here is I'll set up a looper at the front of the chain. So we're gonna capture everything. Basically the only thing that's being affected here is the input impedance. We're capturing the sound, we're gonna record it and then play it back through this signal chain. You can put your guitar down and just mess with the effects. Uh, so like what I'll do is, um, I'll start with something simple. Let's see, I've set it up to foot switch one. I'll do a little finger picked passage and then I'll strum something and then maybe, I don't know, do something in between. And then we're going to let it play back. You can hear what some of these parameters are doing. through the impulse responses. So, yeah, obviously when you're done, if you're not gonna use a looper, get rid of that. Uh, I actually left you an extra block here to throw in a couple extra effects if you wanted. Um, so what I've done, I guess I should mention this one too, because it's not just an effect, it's just a mono chorus block, and I've set the mix pretty low at 12%. And here are the settings for speed, depth, no pre-delay there. Um, and what I'm doing, I feel like it just adds a little bit of dimension to the sound. We can try and listen to it without. I don't know if you're going to notice much. So... That's up to you if you think that's worth it to have it in there. Since it was in there already, I figured I'd trigger up a uh, parameter change with foot switch four to increase the pre-delay and increase the mix so you can actually hear it as a chorus effect. The other effects that I pulled up was just a, uh, a pretty simple tape delay. And I've stacked it up with the tap tempo switch here. And we've got, uh, the reverb also is always on. Here's the parameters. So this is what you're always hearing. And this is with increased reverb.
And uh, so, yeah, that's that's it. That's the gist of the preset. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, and let me know how I did, please. I'd love to know your thoughts on the nylon string sound here. Do you want me to do more presets like this? I'm sure I could, you know, create some wacky effects with the nylon string guitar, but I feel like this is going to serve most purposes. And if there's a very specific effect that you need, uh, you can always just add on to this existing preset. Like I said, the point of this is just to be kind of a starting ground for you guys to create your own presets around. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you hit the like button. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel. I have a ton of Helix tips floating around there. You'll be able to find plenty more uh, that you liked. Remember, this preset was added to the preset library, so if you've gotten it in the past, that's a free update. Just find that Google Drive link. Uh, and if not, there's a link in the description if you want to check out some stuff that I offer. There's plenty of free presets on my website as well. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.